Hello, it's Davey Mooney coming to you from the University of North Texas, where I run the jazz guitar program. I'm a Benedetto artist, Sunnyside Records artist, plotting my uh, next Sunnyside release. It'll be uh, recorded this summer. And before that, my new uh, Mel Bay book will be coming out. This is my previous book, Personalizing Jazz Vocabulary, Jazz Improv, with a focus on guitar, but you know, for all instruments. The new one's going to be much more guitar specific and having to do with shapes and things like that. But uh, yeah, that's not what I want to talk about today. Uh, I want to talk about the Billy Strayhorn song, Upper Manhattan Medical Group, also known as UMMG. Uh, really great tune, one of his, uh, I would say one of his best. I mean, I like everything that he ever wrote, pretty much. But I was uh, searching, you know, th this song came to me through, I think probably in the mid-90s when I first started playing jazz, you know, Joe Henderson was doing all these great uh, albums based on one composer's music, like he did the Tom Jobim one, he did the uh, Billy Strayhorn one, he had a big band record, he did a record of Porgy and Bess, there's another one that I'm forgetting, but uh, really great records, and I think we, we were playing this tune around the New Orleans Center for Creative Arts, I think possibly because it had been repopularized by that Joe Henderson record, and there's a great Wynn Marsalis solo on there, uh, that one's called Lush Life, Joe Henderson, I think 94. But I was uh, looking back into the, uh, <laughs> you know, some internet research on the history of this tune. I also knew of the version on uh, And His Mother Called Him Bill, which is a great record from 67. Uh, that's also got Blood Count, and just really great version. I think Daydream is on there. Really uh, deep, kind of freewheeling. It feels like a, uh, a celebration, that album, because Strayhorn had just passed away. And I guess I thought maybe that was the original version, but it's actually... Uh, it was recorded in 59 on the Ellington Record Jazz Party with Dizzy Gillespie taking the solo. I guess I always associated it with, you know, Clark Terry from the 67 version and then Winton, but I, I should have known, but I forgot that uh, Dizzy was on the 59 version. And then I was, you know, you start searching around YouTube and the internet and you find like all these versions that weren't really necessarily available to us back in the 90s when we were coming up, you know, you'd have to find these things on LP or search through some compilation. But there was a, a Dizzy Gillespie record, I guess, Portrait of Duke Ellington with a big band, I think it's Claire Fisher, and there's another really nice version of uh, Dizzy playing it solo, I think Hank Jones on piano. But really cool song, really uh, harmonically rich. You know, like Strayhorn, he has it all, you know, he has a swing, he's got the harmony, he's got the melody, sometimes he's got the lyrics. I mean, he was just, uh, I got a picture of him on my, my bulletin board outside the office just to, you know, give him his, try to give him his due in the, the Pantheon. But anyway, just to go through the harmony of this tune, I mean, it often kind of starts with a little, I don't know if it's an intro, outro, but this idea, the tune's in D flat. Well, there was a Strayhorn version I found that I think was in D, but I don't know. You never know if that's because the tape got messed up. And Strayhorn, we know, love D-flat. So uh, this interesting kind of one diminished to one sound, which I'm going to talk a, a little bit about later because I don't want to get, I can talk about that harmony for, for days. But So that kind of starts it off. The proper tune is like this, like F minor 7 flat 5 to B flat 7 altered, uh, B flat 7 altered, B flat 7 flat 9 to B flat 7, E flat minor 7, A flat 13. In that sort of one diminished one, D flat diminished, D flat, D flat minor nine to G flat seven, flat nine to natural nine. So it's kind of that almost that, that tritone sub two five, you know, where rather than having C7, I mean he's come from D flat, so by making the D flat minor back to G flat seven, you get that uh you know, instead of going G minor C7 to F minor 7 flat 5, D flat tritone sub of that whole 2 5. Then the second A, it's a basically a 32 bar tune, A, B, A, same thing. F minor 7 flat 5, B flat 7, E flat minor, A flat 13. Same, 1 diminish 1. Then A flat minor 7 to D flat. And then starts on G minor 7 flat 5. So that time you almost have like a chromatic 2 5, or I don't know, it kind of makes you think it's going to go to the 4 chord for the bridge, right? It's setting it up to go to G flat, but instead you have G minor 7 flat 5, C7, F major. 
right? So very rich harmony. I mean, uh, I don't know any other way to really put it, but that idea of like a minor 2-5 going to, uh, uh, to a major 1 chord. And then you think, okay, well, where's he going to go now? Maybe he'll make that a minor 2-5 and get back to D flat some kind of way. But instead he goes up a half step. You have A flat minor 7, flat 5, D flat 7, G flat minor 9. I will say on some of those dizzy versions, I swear he makes that second in the bridge, that second chord a major chord. I think he makes the G flat major at least a few times. You know, I didn't uh, transcribe every solo, and um, as much as I would love to nerd out on these tunes to that extent, you know, there's just not enough hours in the day. But I swear a few times he was playing major there. But then Strayhorn was playing uh, minor, and most people play minor. A flat 13. Last A. And a little tag. I guess it's not a tag, it's a 32 bar tune, but the last uh, sort of ending of the last A section, you have that D flat diminished going to D flat. Um, so maybe just to, to talk about the harmony a bit, maybe I'll start with that sound. And so it's, you know, I say it's D flat diminished going to D flat, but it's a very, uh, really takes advantage of a lot of the intervals and sounds from the half whole diminished scale and some of the different triads and sounds that are contained in that scale. So in D flat, you almost get like this sound. Uh, which is almost, you know, <laughs> so many ways to think about it. I mean, in one sense, it's almost like an A major over D flat with an A major seven sharp 11 over D flat. Like, the, for instance, you know, the D flat half whole diminished scale contains so many different triads, and if you want to really nerd out on uh, diminished uh, harmony, at least from my perspective, I have a whole video on it. But uh, for now, yeah, like uh, I would say that when I play on that sound, and I, I noticed like Dizzy, Clark Terry, Joe Henderson, uh, during the A sections where you have that quick sort of... imply diminished uh, D flat diminished to D flat although at the end you know they play it when the last a when that progression gets repeated twice they do do that a bit so the way I think about it whenever I have that one diminished going to one which is actually the same as flat three diminished you know going to three I always think about it as five of three and because the one chord and the three chord are so similar in function the same basically. So in the key of D flat, you know, D flat major and F minor are basically identical. They're like inversions of each other. So when I have this chord, I kind of think about it as like a C7 flat 9 going to F minor in terms of how I play on it. So I'll play like. to almost treat that D flat uh, diminished as like C7 or a C triad. Might even play a little F harmonic minor in there. But then again, you know, the tune definitely plays off of that A triad sound, right? So, you know, at some point I might, if, like I said, if I had to play over it for an extended period of time, I might try to resolve like an A, A triad to, uh, to an F minor, I don't know. My go-to with the 
one diminished to one or flat three diminished going to three or wherever it goes is really to think of it as the functionality of it as five of three uh, and because the three and the one have such a similar uh, function tonic function and a major key uh, it works for me and you know you get that in a lot of tunes you get I mean straight horn puts a little extra uh, hair on it a little funk on it but you know you get that progression all the time like I tell my students you know let's get lost flats like B flat major seven to B flat diminished or I remember you I mean it comes up again and again uh, one one diminished back to one and I always think of it as as five of three so and yeah the rest of the tune you know the A section stuff you know minor two five the first one goes minor so it's pretty straightforward you can play like E E flat harmonic minor you know F Locrian to uh, some kind of B flat seven alteration you could do B flat half all diminished if you want to keep that diminished idea going you could play you know any number of things um, that harmony is not that strange um, I guess the part where it gets tricky for me, oh, and, and like I said, you know, most of the people I listen to blow on it don't really do the D flat diminished to D flat thing during the A, during the first couple A sections. Um, they just play over D flat. And you know, so the first ending you got D flat minor going to G flat seven. I just arpeggiate, you know, most of the time. One, I think the Strayhorn version, a couple times, instead of going F minor 7 flat 5 to B flat 7, he was going B major 7 to B flat 7. Yeah, like. That's something I always think about when I'm playing on a minor 7 flat 5 chord. I'll play off of a major 7 sound from the tritone, so. Because, you know, the upper structure of a. Uh, from the fifth, F minor seven flat five is B major seven, B major seven, sharp eleven. Uh, so that's another thought about that. Going into the bridge, you know, A flat minor seven, D flat seven, just kind of go down a half step. If you've played a lot of bop tunes, you know that harmony's not that strange up until the bridge. And then you get that minor two five going major, which is like, okay. Expected resolution. You could treat the G minor seven flat five as C seven, same way you would if it was going to F minor. You know, F harmonic minor scale. You know, play off like I was just just saying. Play off a D flat major seven going to C seven. Resolve it to F major. So what's weird? The weirdest thing to me about this tune is getting an F major seven to go to A flat minor seven flat five, D flat seven G flat. Uh, that is a very <laughs> oblique, strange, strange, maybe not the right word, but unexpected and uh, tricky uh, harmonic progression to make work. So what I do, this is where I go to my trusty common tones idea, aka negative guide tones. And in that case, you know, from an F major 7 to get to an A minor 7 flat 5, I find that the note D really helps me. So the six of the F major seven to kind of help me get smooth out the <laughs> the waters, the rough waters between F major seven, F six to A flat minor seven flat five. So if I'm playing the bridge, I'm just kind of you know. That note sounds good over F and the next chord, so it, it smooths it out. Another way I think about it too is I think of the A flat minor seven flat five. You know, I rarely think of it from the root, but I think of it as like a B minor. So if I'm playing G, F major. So I just, I use that D. 
six, and then I was thinking like B minor, because A flat minor, seven flat five from the third is B minor, or C flat minor if you want to be a, a stickler for the theory. So one more time, so F, there's the bridge. A G flat minor to A flat seven. I can I can handle that going back to F minor seven flat five. That's a little funny, but you know it's not too bad. But that's the trickiest part of the tune for me to make sure I've got that. Uh, I smooth out that transition and, and that harmony with some common tones. And then yeah, last A, same thing. You just get hangs you out there a little while longer on the uh, D flat diminished or A triad over over D flat. Uh, a major 7 sharp 11 sound over D flat. Because a lot of the original arrangements really hang on that. There's some saxophone that hangs on the E flat note. But uh, yeah, it's a beautiful tune. Really, as I've said a few times, really rich harmony. Another uh, straight horn just hit it out of the park every time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm going to play a few couple choruses on this tune. And uh, yeah, check out the, uh, and this mother called him Bill, jazz party. That dizzy portrait of Duke Ellington was a, a really nice find for me. I'd never heard that before. And uh, of course, Joe Henderson with Winton and Greg Hutchinson and uh, Christian McBride, Stephen Scott. I think that's everybody uh, on Lush Life from the 90s. All right, y'all. Hope you enjoyed it.